Hello, I'm David Kane, president of Kane Automotive, and I just want to say thank you very much for joining us today. I have the distinct pleasure of spending time with Rand Fishkin, and some of you all are probably going to be very familiar with Rand, and uh, particularly those who are in digital marketing, the dealerships. Uh, the other day, I was fishing through LinkedIn, and I saw where uh, Rand uh, has developed a new company called SparkToro, and I thought, better than me making an assessment of what this company is about, I'd like to hear from uh, the person in charge of that. And for those of you who are not familiar with Rand, I would encourage you to look him up, Google him. You're going to find a lot of great information. So, Rand, welcome. Uh, I would appreciate if you'd introduce yourself and then tell us about SparkToro. Sure. Uh, well, first off, thank you for having me, David. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, yeah, so quick background on me. I uh, dropped out of college many years ago from the University of Washington and started working with my mom, Jillian, on a small uh, web design company that became uh, first an SEO blog and then an SEO consulting company helping folks with organic search and then an SEO software company, which many folks might be familiar with. It's called Moz. And, um, you know, Moz uh, sort of grew to tens of millions of dollars in revenue and, and raised a bunch of venture capital uh, as a few hundred people. And uh, I left that company two years ago and started a new one called SparkToro, which is in the arena of market research and audience intelligence. And, and SparkToro uh, has, a, has a different kind of mission than Moz. Our, our goal is to be a, um, an organic growth, uh, profitable, long-term company rather than sort of a venture-backed one. And uh, we are trying to specifically help uh, product folks, entrepreneurs, founders, uh, market researchers, and marketers, people who do you know, content marketing and PR and distribution, uh, to solve a thorny research problem. And that problem is really finding out where, to whom, to what an audience pays attention learning behavioral characteristics about an audience. And, and unfortunately, uh, right now that data is really frustratingly hard to come by. We talk to tons and tons of businesses in all sorts of sectors uh, who basically run surveys, do interviews, hire agencies, hire market research firms to conduct very expensive, very time consuming, hard to update uh, market research about their audiences, right? So, you know, if you, for example, wanted to reach architects in Canada, or you wanted to reach um, people who are interested in uh, Forex, right? Uh, um, foreign currency exchange in the UK and who do trading in that area, or you're looking to reach people who, um, uh, who, who are professional uh, comedians in the United States. <sighs> you know, doing market research on, on these different kinds of segments is really challenging. And yes. you know, for folks like you and I, we might know one or two niches really well, right? Inside and out, we've been for years or decades. So we know who the big players are and we generally have a sense of what our audiences listen to, how they describe themselves, what they talk about online, what they follow, read, listen, and watch. And even we are often surprised, right? Even, even I am often surprised, despite my two decades in SEO, I'm often surprised to see, gosh, I didn't know that that podcast was popular with search engine optimization professionals. I didn't realize that a lot of people in SEO and web marketing visit this website, follow this person, listen, to, you know, watch this YouTube channel, those kinds of, of data points. And SparkToro is designed to make that really easy. Just, wow. you know, do a search, Describe your audience and SparkToro will tell you, here are the social accounts they follow. Here are the websites that they visit and engage with. Here are the YouTube channels they subscribe to. Here's the podcast they listen to. Here's how they describe themselves, right? All, all these behavioral attributes are just right at your fingertips within a few seconds of a quick search. Well, so I love, I love that strategy. So with that in mind, uh, I'm going to do a screen share and I'm going to go back to uh, the home page, and by the way, I always love reading the about uh, pages. And, and your co your colleague sounds 
like a really cool dude. And uh, uh, I'm glad that he lets you think you're running the company when in fact he is. I, I thought that was really fun. But uh, so let's just say I come to your website and uh, I love this. Anything where it says try it free today. So I'm all about that as will be all of our customers. So let's just say our uh, my audience frequently frequently talks about uh, um, let's say uh, sport utility vehicles and analyzing over seventy million profiles. I love that. You know what would it take for us to go out there and do that kind of market research? So we've got fifteen hundred and forty nine sources who frequently talk about sport utility. Uh, vehicles. So I've got this data up on the screen. Do us a favor and kind of talk me through this. I'm a novice if I'm, you know, going through this. What, what did I just discover? Right. So what you basically did is you said, Spark Toro, search your database and tell me how many profiles you've collected that in the last uh, 90 to 120 days or so have uh, talked about in their social sharing and website pages, uh, sport utility vehicles, right? All three of those words uh, more than once, right? They're going to have to do it a few times before we count them in the database as having frequently talked about something and, and then return behavioral data about those 1,549 people, right? So we went to our database, we found 1,549 profiles of people who on their social accounts, or their websites, have talked about sport utility vehicles, and then we pulled in data about them. And you can see that audience size is, is reasonably large, not huge, reasonably large. Uh, behavioral similarity, this is, this is their behavior uh, as a group, right? So it ranges from very diverse to very homogenous, meaning a, a very homogenous community might be one where everyone in the community follows the same people, uh, visits the same websites, describes themselves in the same way, and a community that's very diverse, on the other hand, describes themselves differently, follows different stuff, pays attention to different stuff. So you talk about sport utility vehicles, that ranges across wide segments of society. So no surprise, behavioral similarity, very diverse. And then we have this audience confidence rating. So if you're familiar with like how election polling works, David, right? Mm -hmm. They basically, you know, they, they ask, you know, they'll take a sample of a thousand people that they call up in, you know, California or a thousand people they call up in Michigan and they ask, you know, who are you voting for for governor or what do you think about Proposition 123, right? And then, and then uh, based on the quantity of responses and the diversity of the behavior of, in those responses, they come up with a confidence interval. So they say like plus or minus 2% plus or minus 4%, yes. right? So a lot of times like the, the past presidential election in the United States, for example, all the pollsters said it was, you know, within the margin of error, which is why there was a lot of uncertainty about who might win. And, yes. and uh, Spark Toro does something similar. We take that audience, analyze their behavior and their size and give a confidence interval. So we're moderately to high confidence about the data that we're showing about this audience. Then yeah, you get to see, right, then you get to see uh, a, a sample of the social accounts we say this, this audience follows and how many of them do, the websites that they visit, the YouTube channels they subscribe to, the podcasts they listen to, and a bunch of other behavior as you scroll down the page. And then you can get more of this stuff, right? So if you want to say, well, I think, you know, maybe I would like to get my new electric SUV uh, in front of a bunch of people who listen to uh, podcasts in this space, or I want to try and sponsor one of these YouTube channels, or I want to uh, listen to these so that I can learn more about this audience, right? And, and be kind of uh, aware of what they're um, paying attention to. Well, there you go, right? Excellent. So now let's move to uh, the practical aspects of I operate a dealership and I've been told my, by my dealer principal, uh, we need to sell pickup trucks uh, to customers who want to uh, pull horses uh, and have a horse trailer. What would I type in and, and what, what is, what's the guidance? How do I use this effectively? 
Yeah, so it, I will say SparkTorrent is a little challenging if your goal is reach a very, very broad uh, demographic um, or psychographic audience and, and much, much better if you are able to identify professions, uh, interests, or existing behavior, right? Okay. So let's say, for example, uh, you are talking about wanting to reach an audience that um, uh, works in or owns, um, you know, owns a farm, has animals, uh, you know, maybe um, pulls right, horse trailers, those kinds of things, yes. right? So you yes. could say, uh, show me an audience that uh, describes themselves as, so you, you've got um, that drop down there for the My Audience. Okay. And you can click that and you can see there, there's, there's uh, uh, five ways to search. Oh, awesome. Right, so you could say, here are people who talk about something. They could talk about horse trailers, they could talk about horses, uh, they could talk about pickup trucks. Um, I think it might even be interesting to try a search like that, right? So we could try a search like frequently talks about uh, horses and uh, pickups. And we could see if there's indeed you know, an audience that we've got um, that, that fits that criteria. My guess is it'll be small, but it, it's hard to say. Uh, okay, not, not that small. And so uh, then you can see a very, very diverse audience here and the numbers around these individual social accounts, right, generally below 10%, which fits with that diverse audience. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you were a social media marketer and you could get these people to amplify your post, that might be extraordinary, right? Yeah, that's really interesting. Okay, so, uh, you know, then obviously you come through and you see some of the, the typical channels, but I think probably uh, what, what I'm finding is this is a wonderful resource for just good education to uh, my, my overall marketplace. So if I, uh, if I then came back and I said, uh, just those who talked about horses, obviously if I wanted to, to do that horse and hound, the horse racing post, now I can more uh, generally say, okay, I, I didn't know where I wanted to market, but now I'm going to go to the blood horse or and maybe run, run advertising or follow their social accounts. So that, that tends to to serve its better purpose for me, just, just to orient myself to things that my clients are interested in. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right? So if you wanna have a sense, if you wanna sort of better understand an audience that you feel like you might not understand all that well today, these might be some sources you could uh, check out. And then if you're looking to do advertisements or sponsorships or co-marketing or a promotion or, uh, outreach for link building like you're in SEO or outreach for content placement because you're doing guest editorials and content marketing or social media marketing, right? Whatever your tactics, we, SparkToro is not trying to be prescriptive about that, right? We don't want to say, now do this with that data. Yeah. We want to say, you have your marketing tactics. You know what works uh, in, in your segment and for your business. We just want to tell you where you can go do those things. If you want to reach this audience, an audience interested in this, talking about this, describing themselves these ways with these, you know, titles uh, who already follow these other profiles, we'll tell you how to do that. We'll, we'll tell you where to do that. And, and truly you uh, became such an expert in, in search engine marketing and optimization. Uh, so I'm curious, how you see SparkToro growing and, and what, what's your vision for the future, if you would, because, you know, at, at this point, it's, it's interesting, it's cool, but, but with Moz, I, I could, it became a tool. So do you see this becoming something in a marketer's toolkit uh, and, and thinking more in line with automotive marketing? Do you see this at the OEM level? Do you see this at the, uh, like, agency level or do you see this more at the dealership level? Uh, my suspicion is that this will be um, most useful to, well, gosh, you know what? That 
that is actually a tough question to answer right now, David, because so one of the things that Casey and I did is we said we do not want to be prescriptive or exclusive about, about uh, who this is necessarily for. Our early customers, I will say, were mostly, when we did beta testing and did our early access, uh, they were mostly professional marketers and market researchers at consult who are consultants and agencies. Yes. That being said, more than 50% of the people who signed up and paid, uh, we've got maybe 150-ish customers right now, uh, and more than half of those are not agencies and consultants. They are, in fact, in-house marketers at individual companies, everything from uh, finance to legal field to um, uh, consumer food products and packaged products to uh, e-commerce, retail, just all across the board. Um, I'm trying to remember. I think we, we have had a couple, one, um, one sort of automobile manufacturer and one what I would call like online uh, informational publisher website mm -hmm. uh, in automotive sign up. So I, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know uh, who it will be for long term. My hope, I, I honestly hope that much like you know, um, a lot of other market research data tools, this is not exclusive to one particular group, but rather useful to a broad range of people who need a question answered. Yeah. Right? If you say, for example, let's say you're a marketer who works for a dealership, consulting or in-house. Mm -hmm. And you go to the head of the dealership, the owner, you know, the, the, uh, the owner of the dealership, and they're like, hey, I've got uh, $50,000 a month that I want to spend on marketing. And I would like us to run this ad in our local newspaper. It's going to be $12,000 a month. I want us to run a six-month package, put together some creative for me. And you say, I, I don't think that newspaper ad is going to do all that well, friend. Right? I it, you know, it's not, it's not going to read. And the, right, the, the owner pushes back and says, I know my customers. My customers pay attention to this paper. They visit its website. They listen to its podcast, what, right? This is the source. And you go, okay, tell me a little more about your customers. Well, they tend to be these different groups, right? And I'm trying to uh, uh, re reach these different groups. All right, well, let's go to SparkToro and let's search for those groups. Boy, those groups, 16% of them pay attention to this publication, this social account, this website. Only 2% of them pay attention to the publication you told us you wanted to spend all your budget on. <laughs> so now you've got some data to help either back up or, dis or, or dissuade people from going with their gut. And I think that, that a, a historic challenge around this has been we kind of had to go with our guts, right? Google and Facebook, for all that they do in online advertising, they don't show you this kind of data, right? They hide it so that you'll spend money with them. Yes. Frustrating. Very, very frustrating. It is frustrating. And, and I think, you know, using Google as an example, the reason why we would use Google is uh, they re return what we were kind of expecting. And the day they stop, I'll go someplace else. So my question would be, how granular is your data sources to where you could sit here and say, for example, I'm in uh, Oakland, California. Will I see the uh, San Jose Mercury News? Will I see uh, you know, those? Or, or let's go small market and go outside of Seattle where you're based and go to uh, like Bremerton or, or someplace out there. Will I see their local paper? Right. So let's, yeah, let's take a, let's take a, an audience that's interested in um, aftermarket auto parts, right? So maybe um, aftermarket parts and they're located in Oakland. After, uh, I'm not sure if this is the wording that people who are interested in aftermarket tend to use. You would know better than I would. <laughs> maybe it's something else. Maybe accessories, vehicle accessories. Okay, yeah. Accessories. Oh, what? Uh, yeah. So we could try and ID people. So it's small numbers, right? But you can get super granular, right? So you can say, okay, here's people in Oakland 
We only have a few of them, but they've talked about vehicle accessories recently. Or we could say um, people who describe themselves as a gearhead yeah. who are based in Oakland, right? And then we could, oops, what am I doing wrong? Let's try California. Maybe gearhead is not a descriptor <laughs> that's uh, that's used much anymore. Um, oh, I know, classic car. So let's, let's look at there that. we go. Uh, so people into who, and this, these are two different things. So we have this frequently describes them, frequently talks about. So that's going to give a much larger group. And my guess is the plural is going to be useful there. Yeah. Right. And so these would be people who mention the words classic cars. So there's thousands of them in California who've talked about classic cars in the last 90 days or so. Uh, and then what they follow and are interested in. Right. And I might go to. Right. I might look at the social ones and be like, gosh, you know, these are pretty popular, like big picture ones. As you go down, though, you get more and more uh, niche Jay Leno's Garage, right? No surprise right. there. Big classic car guy. Uh, <laughs> Ev from Twitter, not, not surprising again. Uh, the LACMA, which did, a, which did a bunch of classic car events, right? Yeah. Uh, Tracy Morgan, right? So all of these... And you can, in fact, um, filter. We've got this idea of filtering based on uh, what we call hidden gems, kind of these accounts that uh, are not very popular but have lots of engagement around a topic and see some other ones there. So when I go and like click a source, I can then see things about that source. So people who follow this marketplace for classic cars have these types of behavioral traits visit these other websites and social accounts. And I might say, oh, okay, this is a, this is a really cool audience. I wanna run an Intel search on the people who this, right, different one follow. And so you can, you gotta go down this rabbit hole of finding sources of influence and interesting characteristics and then searching based on that data wow. and building up, right, potentially building up a, uh, a big list of, oh, Hey, yeah, I want to find, all right, Jay Leno's garage, that one looked good to me. This gas monkey garage, the Motor Trend channel, I want this hot rod network, uh, the car, classic car auction podcast, right? And then I go, oops, up to the top and create a list uh, of, right, for my classic car outreach, right? And now I'm gonna go to all of these different, um, Right, so now I've, I've built that list and I can go to my, my sort of lists page okay. and see uh, classic car outreach and see my, my different YouTube channels that I said I wanna go after. And now I can, maybe I wanna go pitch these people directly, right, for a guest spot or a sponsorship, or maybe I just wanna go to Google display ads, right, YouTube display ads and, and say, I wanna use these channels as where I wanna run my ad. That's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted to see. Uh, yeah, so uh, everything you unlocked, obviously you've got a paid account. Good for you. So what, what do, what do, uh, what's the benefit? So would I go to my uh, marketing company and say, hey, dude, you need to get on Sparktorio. And, and obviously you're doing, a, you're, you're growing a company. What's your plan? I mean, will, will this be kind of a curiosity thing? Do you see this being a real educational platform? Uh, what's your hopes and dreams tell you? Yeah, so uh, like I said, we, we, we've had about 150 people, you know, sign up for paid accounts so far. I, my hope is that SparkToro can be useful either for free, right? If you only need to run a few searches and you just need some like top level data, hopefully we hope that the, the product can be really useful to you even just for free, right? Answering some of those like quick questions. Uh, we're giving everyone 10 free searches a month. So I hope, I hope we see what we saw in this first week, which was like, you know, 9,000 or so people using it for free and a few, you know, a few hundred uh, using it paid. And then I, I hope that we, we only launched a week ago. So my hope is, you know, in the, in the months and years ahead, uh, we can be helpful to thousands of small and medium businesses 
who need to have this data to be able to compete with the, with the big players, yeah. right? If you've got a huge budget, uh, we talked to a bunch of, uh, of folks like this, right? If you have a huge budget, you can do this research yourself. Yes. Right? You can build your own databases of your audiences. You can have developers go out and crawl the web and collect this data, aggregate it for you so that you can analyze it. You know, it's months and months of work, but it is totally possible. Unfortunately, if you're not Google, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, BMW, right, car and driver, like you don't have that kind of budget, yeah. but you might still want to, you know, get this intelligence, get this data, and your budget is a couple hundred bucks, right? Yes. So as a, instead of going to a market research firm who says, yeah, we can do that, but it's going to be 20K. You can go to SparkToro and you know pay for a week of access or a month of access, run your run a ton of searches, or just run them for free if that's all you need, and get this type of data. Start building these lists uh, and essentially informing your marketing, uh, your your audience research, and your advertising efforts with more data. Yeah, awesome. So in closing. Um, you, you're going to have a diverse listening audience to this. You're going to have uh, car dealers. You're going to have automotive marketers. You're going to have OEM people. Give us a message. You know, what, why Spark Turo? Why Spark Turo? Well, so I, you know, David, I, I don't like to sell my, even my own stuff, sure. right? So I, I think my message, my message would just be if you have a need for this type of information, right? If you are curious about, hey, we've been having a lot of success reaching an, a describable audience of some kind, an audience that's interested in horses, an audience of uh, architects, an audience of general contractors who need pickup trucks, um, an audience of, uh, we, we've been having a ton of success selling high-end luxury supercars to people who are deeply interested in that, or classic cars to people who are interested in that, great. If you have an audience like that and you want more intelligence about the YouTube channels they watch and subscribe to, the podcasts they listen to, the websites they visit, social accounts they follow, SparkToro can tell you that. And it's, it's a really easy tool to use. You don't have to be an expert. You don't have to know anything technical, right? The, the numbers that you see in SparkToro are, are conveniently, you know, uh, if I type in architect, well, this frequently talks about, let's go, let's go, you know, what SparkToro is telling you is super uh, interpretable by anyone, right? Very, very obvious information. It's saying 20% of the 36,000 people in our database who describe themselves as an architect follow this ARC daily podcast, uh, uh, social account. Wow. Not, no technical expertise needed, right? And then if somebody says, well, I think whatever it is, uh, home and garden is more popular with architects, you can say, I don't think so. Great way to win bets, isn't it? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Rand, you are so generous to spend time with us today. I really appreciate this. Oh, uh, gosh, no, it is my pleasure, David. Thank you for having me. Wish the best of luck to you and yours, and uh, certainly I'll pass along any uh, feedback that I get from the, the viewers, and uh, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. I love that. Thanks, man. Take care.